Hey everyone, welcome to Proof of News. I am Whit Gibbs here with my awesome host, Ethan Vera. Ethan, how you doing, man? As good as you can be, Whit. It's been a you know sobering week in, in mining. So um, you know, a lot of news. Um, you know, one of our, our friends from Chengdu uh passed away um earlier and uh definitely it makes you realize that while you know we get caught up in the mining industry, there there's bigger stuff at play here. So yeah, it's been quite the week. Absolutely. Rest in peace to Matt D'Souza. That was, uh, that one hit close to home. It's tough to hear. Uh, Matt was a great guy and, uh, he did a lot of good. Um, and he, he was just a positive force for Bitcoin. So it's, uh, he's going to be missed. Definitely. Um, God, yeah, that was, that was, a uh, it was a crappy piece of news to wake up on, but, um, but anyways, you know, on, on, we have to go. Um, you know, there was, there's been a lot of news as always in the mining community over the past couple of, uh, couple of weeks and couple of days specifically, um, over the last week or so, we've really seen, you know, BTC King kind of set his sights on layer one recently. And, uh, there's some new news that he has put forward. So Ethan, why don't you fill everyone in on what, uh, BTC King has reported regarding Alex legal and layer one. Yeah, for, for people that don't know, uh, BTC King, I think 555 is an anonymous account on Twitter that's been exposing different mining companies over the years. So historically, he's targeted Bitmain. Uh, he was then targeting Kanon and Ebang as they went public. Um, recently, he was going after Northern Data. And then uh, his most recent sites are, as you mentioned, are on Layer 1. Uh, he recently brought up a, a few things about Layer 1 specifically. Uh, that they're faking who their team members are on their investor slide. They're currently going out for a fundraising round, and they mentioned that uh, a certain uh, person from Canon was head of supply, when in reality he's just an advisor. And then also um, the background of one of their Genesis mining folks is also in question from from Marco over at Genesis. So that was the first uh, thing that came up. And then second, uh, BTC King also said that they didn't actually raise their full 50 million in their round, although that was, you know, going around in the press and that it was some number under that. So he's kind of been going hard at them for that. And it's definitely the, the talk of the mining community this week. Okay, look, so I've said this before and I'll say this again. I told I was talking to our team about this today. Uh, if Peter Thiel writes hash rate a $10 check and we're in a fundraising round, then the press release the following day will read Peter Thiel leads the round. Um, I mean, it's, it's just the nature of it, right? Like when you're fundraising, it's all marketing because you want people to be attracted to your, uh, your opportunity. And there's a lot of dollars that are looking for homes and there's a lot of venture capitalists that are out there. They want to, you know, make bets on the winning pony. Uh, but you got to show yourself. And I think Alex did a great job of, you know, being that person to go out and raise the money for layer one. And, um, he, he talked a big game and I know a lot of people in Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining specifically had questions, comments, concerns about the tweets that he was putting out and, you know, how he was promoting their business. Um, yeah, I, I, part of it, I think falls on the, you know, the journalists and us as readers, um, uh, and then of course on them as well. Uh, you know, the, the headline that sticks out to me is just Peter Thiel invests $50 million in layer one. Right. Um, when, and you know, he's never writing a $50 million check. So I, I don't know what, are, what's your, like, what's your opinion on all of this? I, I lean towards your side too. I mean, obviously none of that's good and you should be like ethical, especially in investor decks. Um, but at the end of the day, mining is a really competitive industry and you got to be a bit scrappy, take a few shortcuts. I think, um, you know, they're getting a lot of attention because one, they're American based. So we hold them to a higher standard. Um, and then two, because they've obviously had the spotlight, but I, I know for a fact that there's, there's mining companies and other crypto companies around the world that have done very similar things and the spotlight's not on them, uh, because those types of business practices are normal in other parts of the world, especially in China and in, in China, like getting like fake investors that lead you around is actually quite common. <laughs> when we're when we're traveling for our fundraising round somebody said hey you should get like a fake lead they basically send you a check that's worth like 10 percent of what they're supposed to send you 
but then they go and tell the investors that they actually led the round and you fill the rest of the round. Yeah. It's funny how that works. Right. And look, I, I, I appreciate what BTC King does. Um, I think that a lot of the information that he puts forward on, you know, publicly traded companies um, and, you know, people in the mining space in general, it's fantastic and it is needed um, and it keeps people honest. And I think that even this situation where, you know, whatever the opinion is, I mean, I know us, like when hash rate goes out and if we're looking to raise around, we are uh, always looking to do things in the right way. But, you know, if there was ever the thought of like taking a misstep or, you know, maybe cutting a corner, you can rest assured that there's going to be someone that calls you out on it, which in turn, according to game theory, is going to make you act a certain way. Right. And I think that it's important to have someone like BTC King in the space because it should help people act right. Um, and not to say that Alex was acting wrong. I think that the, the, layer, the layer one situation as it stands right now, uh, it, there's just there's a lot of question marks. I mean, they're in the process of this lawsuit with Lancium as well, which you talked about on the last show. It's, uh, it's a, you know, when it rains, it pours scenario for them right now, I think. Yeah, it's been a tough week for Alex. Uh, I, I do feel bad for the team. I think uh, this is definitely like a mess up. I personally would never have done something like that. And it, also the state that it's alleged at this point, it hasn't been proven, but um, I think they can bounce back from this. It's bad, but it's not that bad. Yeah. I mean, listen, I hope they bounce back. Layer one is a very important uh, company for American Bitcoin mining, much the same as we said about Northern data you have these big operations that are getting negative press. It is bad for Bitcoin. Like it doesn't matter how you slice it. It doesn't matter how you're, you know, which lens you're looking at it through. Um, most people that are viewing this news are not industry insiders. They do not have the level of insight as we do, or as you know, you as viewers probably do if you're into mining, they're just seeing scammy shit happening in Bitcoin mining and they lump it all into one category. So I hope this all, uh, I, I'm looking forward to Alex coming out and saying something and clearing it up. Um, you know, he's been very public and, and very outspoken to this point. So it would be really, really bad if all of a sudden he stops that, you know, this is not the time to be quiet. I agree. Yeah. I mean, he has his PR team. Um, he obviously is probably consulting with his lawyers and his shareholders, but he should have an AMA or just come out have an open discussion, let people ask questions, uh, give them honest answers. Um, I, I think they can get through this for sure. And, and like you said, like you, you continue to make good points on this is that we're in it together in the Bitcoin mining community. We want to be supportive of each other. Obviously we, we do want to act ethically and call each other out when we're not ethical, but at the end of the day, we want to build this industry together. And if all the headlines are negative, that's not going to help anyone. Especially in the right. US where, you know, we're trying to get all the companies here are trying to get like institutional capital into Bitcoin mining. Layer one is like one of the companies that is like a, a case study for that. So if this, if layer one goes wrong, it's going to make everyone else's job of getting institutional capital into mining a lot harder. True, true, true. So, I mean, do you have any closing thoughts on, uh, on this situation here? I mean, what, BTC King's been pretty good about just like staying on something until answers come out. So what do you think? I think we're going to see uh, a, a let up here. I I hope not until Alex comes out. I, I like BTC King and I like his approach. It's I think it's good. Um, but I think, yeah, if Alex comes out and, and answers questions, honestly, admits that, you know, maybe he was wrong in certain things and then we can move past it. Um, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> Let's talk about some lighter things here. There we go. There we go. What do we have? Rig uh, prices? Are we going to look at hash rate index? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go over some mining economics. Uh, it was a pretty eventful week in the rig market, so good to cover it. I think rigs are you know top of mind for most miners out there. Um, sourcing rigs, getting them at a good price, so uh, good to cover for sure. Uh, we updated the rig price index this morning, so we pulled the numbers. Uh, some qu quite interesting uh, movements here, pretty much across the board, uh, some increases. So new gen up 5% week over week. Um, and then the old gen being the S9s, they were also up 6.5%. So the market is tightening around those types of rigs right now. 
the really interesting part is that the 60 to 100 joules per terahash range actually decreased 13% week over week. So things like the S13 or the S15, which no one ever talks about, um, th those are actually trading at a pretty big discount right now uh, for dollars per terahash. And you could start to see some miners pour some money into those kind of third gen rigs. Um, you know, the, the, I guess the unspoken about generation, which everyone seems to forget. They really are. They're the one that I think, you know, everyone missed just because the S9s did so well and the S17s were <laughs> so newsworthy. Um, so how does, I mean, I know everyone heard the news about the, the strong U A6 that came out over the past couple of days. I think the announcement happened. Um, where do they fit in here? How is, how is this working? I mean, what's, what's the news on those? Are those like, when are those supposed to start shipping? Yeah, so Strong U is a name that probably not a lot of miners have heard of uh, because the main manufacturers have historically been for, for SHA-256 miners, Bitmain, Canon, uh, What's Miner, Micro BT, and Evang, um, and in the Silicon. Um, Strong U has put out quite a few altcoin miners, and that's why I'm pretty familiar with them. We have quite a few thousand connected to our Dash pool right now, and miners are pretty happy with their Dash miners. Um, they have performed better than the Bitmain machine. So they beat them at one altcoin. Um, I'm hopeful that they can add or continue to expand in the SHA-256 realm and add more competition to it. This miner, it's not the most competitive, but it's pretty good. I mean, it's, uh, it's around that 40 uh, to 45 joules per terahash range, which uh, from an efficiency standpoint it is pretty good. And so depending on its pricing, which looks to be around like $18.5 per terahash, uh, that's like, it's, it's looking like a pretty good buy. So I'm excited to see people try these out, see if they're actually, you know, stable, efficient, match up the specs and can run nicely. Ethan, you're obviously a, a wealth of knowledge when it comes to dash mining, uh, being that you guys have, I mean, one of the biggest, if not the biggest dash pool in the world. Um, how, how do the strong use perform when it comes to dash? I mean, are the, the buyers of those ASICs happy overall? They are. They they actually run more efficiently than the Bitmain machine. So they have a better spec too. Um, yeah, so overall, I think it they've proven themselves once. Obviously, altcoin mining is way less competitive than SHA-256. Sure, sure. So yeah. it's, it's not for sure, but at least I think I'm optimistic that they could potentially add, you know, another caliber miner such as like, on the same level as Kanan or something, which is good for the industry. Even if they can't beat, you know, Bitmain, it's still good to have more rigs out there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we need more just like machines at this point. Like uh, right now it's, it's, it's of course relevant how efficient and you know, all of that matters, but it's also at this point, like we just need stuff to get online. <laughs> like there are people who just, they have cheap power and they need to put anything online so that they can mine Bitcoin. Um, but it is good to hear that the strong U machines did well, did well on Dash or are doing well on Dash because I mean, that's a good indicator, right? I mean, their um, strong U is getting chips from Samsung. So they've got that contract. It's good to know that they know what they're doing when it comes to the build and the construction of these machines. And when they're releasing them, it's probably going to do okay. I mean, as long as they're competitive and there's another name that can get in the mix, I think it's, it's, I mean, it's good overall. I'm, I'm excited. I know there's a couple of more that are uh, at least one more that should be coming out soon. Um, I mean, Wadham did that. I, I don't know if you saw this, but like Wadham put out that a, a new ASIC was coming out. They released it in a newsletter and then they were called the newsletter. Uh, so, and it was supposed to be on par with like the S 19s and that was in like late June, early July, I think maybe, I mean, it was around there. But I haven't heard anything since, so I'm wondering if we could be seeing another ASIC coming in the next, you know, six weeks or so. Hope so. I think we talked about this last time too. Uh, I know Scott Offord was going around saying yes. a new rig yeah, was yeah. coming out with same efficiency, and then Christy was tweeting about it. Um, uh, maybe a different. I think Christy one. was tweeting. Uh, Christy was probably tweeting about the strong you. I have a feeling. Like I haven't. I haven't checked with her. But I have a feeling that Christy, when she had tweeted that, she knew that this announcement was coming. Yeah. I, I'm hopeful too. I mean, I'll believe it when I see it though, especially an American manufacturer. And uh, I think one of the, 
like being on par with Bitmain for efficiency in my head seems like a too good to be true situation. So I'm naturally skeptical uh, of any rig that uh, claims to have that level of efficiency. I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, and I mean, 50,000 rigs per, uh, 50,000 ASIC per month output too. I mean, it's, it's great. It's, anyways, all right, look, all, all joking aside, um, it's great that Strong U has put this ASIC out. I think it's fantastic that uh, we have a new market entrant. Um, and we'll see, right? Like, uh, that's the beauty of Bitcoin. Like, the market's going to decide. Maybe it's fantastic. Maybe it's dog shit. We're going to all know here in the very near future once people get them on and hashing. Um, and you know, then, then there won't be any need to speculate. We'll get to, we'll get to know definitively where these all stand. So, um, that'll be exciting to see. So speaking of hash rate, how are we, uh, how are we looking this week? Yeah. And this is like an interesting, um, I guess maybe not conspiracy theory, but maybe theory that people put out there is that manufacturers want to pump the price of Bitcoin before the launch of their sale. And so, uh, I don't have any facts to back this up, but people have said that, you know, Bitmain in the past has done some market manipulation around the price when they're about to put on sale, because then people are looking at the rig purchase, they see a way better payback period and they can sell more units at a higher price. So uh, I'm curious to, you know, d dive into that topic further in the future and see if there is some correlation between rig price announcement and Bitcoin uh, movements, um, you know, on the, on the note of strong you launching. Uh, right now it's not the best market to launch into because week over week, we saw a pretty significant drop in the value of hash rate. It dropped 12%. So the payback period for strong you, you know, if you looked at it a week ago would be uh 12% less than it is today. And that's not great as a manufacturer to sell into that was mostly driven by a decrease in price. So we, we went down from, you know, just under 12K there down to what we are today at around 11.3, 11.4. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also saw a bump in difficulty. Difficulty went up 3.6% uh, during the period too. So uh, those two in combination have hurt the, the value of hash rate pretty significantly here week over week. It's interesting. So price went down, obviously. Um, difficulty went up. And difficulty went up 3%, price went down, I mean, what is that, 5%? Um, so what, what was the drop, did you say, in hash rate? The value of hash rate dropped 13%. Interesting. I wonder, like, as, as time moves on and more of this data is tracked, if there's going to eventually be some way to calculate those three metrics you know, those three data points and see how or if there is some formula to, you know, to be able to uh, predict which, which will be at which value based on the other two. Um, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, you, you can get like this formula to get this value per terahash is derived off of uh, a few components. Uh, the price of Bitcoin, obviously, uh, difficulty level, uh, transaction fees and block reward. So you can, you can build up this value per hash rate on just those four metrics alone. Makes the prediction markets very easy, huh? You have those four, <laughs> use those four right there. Um, it, it's all, it's, this is fascinating to me. Like as, as this continues to develop, this is, uh, yeah, it's very exciting. I mean, right now, obviously with the price of Bitcoin cooling off the way that it has, I think that, um, I think that we're going to see a continuation on alts, which is going to in turn lead to a higher transaction fees on Bitcoin's blocks and also uh, benefit ETH miners. So it'll be interesting. I think profitability, I mean, profitability for ETH miners has been fantastic for a while now. I think that's going to continue to trend up. Um, and we should start to see a nice, uh, a nice bump in the transaction fees uh, per block reward on on Bitcoin mining as well. So I don't know. I, I like it right now. It, it's almost like um, you just need to be in the market, you know, which is part of the reason why I talk about and we've talked about the the importance of new machines coming online because the price of Bitcoin matters always, of course, um, but being operational right now, I think, is the most important thing. Like even more so than um, you know, than what the price of Bitcoin is. It's just like, 
having machines online so that you can you can mine right now is, is critical. Uh, so yeah, that's hopefully, good point. hopefully we're able to see hopefully we're able to see strong you perform and these other machines come online. Um, what do we got next on the docket for today? I guess the big announcement. Uh, what everyone hopes to to happen to them. Uh, the acquisition of uh, Blockfolio by uh, FTX for $150 million. $150 million. Whoa. So hats off to Sam and team and the Blockfolio team. I mean, this is, this is an amazing... I know it's an acquisition, but I think the Blockfolio team will be heavily involved in what goes on from here. Um, did you happen to see Sam's thread on like everything coming together that he put out on Twitter earlier today? Yeah, I, I love Sam, man. Uh, de- definitely head to Sam's Twitter and read that. It was, uh, it was yeah. sweet. Yeah, he's put some really good threads out over the past few weeks from like venture capital to luck to this one. Um, and he's just such a like he's he's such a big brain. Like when when I'm reading his his tweets or you know in the times that I've interacted, he's incredibly intelligent and everything is very well thought out. But just seeing like the launch of SRM and Serum, their decks that they're going to do, um, and then the the acquisition of of Blockfolio uh, and everything else that they have going on, it's amazing to me. I mean, if you think about Almeida, right? Alameda is a market maker, they're a liquidity provider, however you want to like phrase that. Um, they do a tremendous amount of trading on all markets crypto, right? Now they're going to have access to almost everyone's portfolio information, right? And uh, I mean, frankly speaking, a lot of their trading information. So the edge that they're going to have in this business is crazy. It's crazy. I my my prediction is they overtake Binance in the next two years, easily. I hope so. I, I'm rooting for Sam and team. They're just such good guys too, so it's hard not to root for them. I think the acquisition makes a ton of sense. The success story here, like obviously everyone wants to get bought out for 150 million. Um, you know, maybe we can throw in hash rate and Luxor into that. I'll take 75. You take 75. But I think the real success story is FTX. FTX launched like in 2019. And they're buying companies for 150 million. Sam has relentlessly shipped product. He's up at like 4 a.m. building stuff, doing stuff himself, answering customer like calls. I've I've messaged him with stupid questions before about their difficulty futures, and he's answered me. I'm like, how do you do all this? He's not even human. Um, you know, so that's the real success story. There is is FTX for sure. Um, you know, and, and definitely rooting for them to, like you said, overtake maybe by finance. That'd be that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, I mean, look, some people have an extra gear. Um, Sam is one of those people. And that's not to say that other people don't have that gear. I think that there's there's a level of entrepreneurial spirit that goes into building any business. And when it comes to what Sam's doing, it's just like, it's amazing to watch. You know, the conversation that we had with him on the Hash Rate podcast, where we talked about Hash Rate Futures, and then like seven days later, he launched them, you know? <laughs> Uh, it's nuts. Like we finished that podcast. We had a 30 minute conversation. He was like, Oh, do you guys think these would make sense? We're like, yeah, absolutely. I think the industry needs them. Boom. Seven days later, product ships. Um, and it's awesome to see. I think that he is amazing for the space. I think that he is, uh, he's, he's the kind of entrepreneur that we need leading a lot of the innovation in crypto, uh, because he's also very transparent. Like, uh, he's not hiding behind, a team, like you mentioned, like he's the one to answer your requests. He'll be the first person to jump on a call with you. You know, if there's questions, he'll answer them. He's not going to hide behind some, you know, veil of secrecy or, you know, play the corporate games. Uh, and I think that's very important, you know, because he's, he's managing money for a lot of people. Um, and he, I, I don't think that he takes that lightly at all. Uh, and that's, that's refreshing, right? Like to him, this is a business and I'm sure, and he's excited to make money and that's fantastic. But he also treats the responsibility of, you know, managing other people's finances on his exchange or, um, you know, through Alameda or now through Serum, he he treats that with, uh, you know, a ton of respect and he acts that way. So it's really cool. I, I just, I hope that we see more of this in crypto. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, bringing it back to mining too, I think this M&A cycle has been heating up. So this 
year, we've seen the coin market cap acquisition for what was it 400 mil by Binance uh, to go me acquisition yeah, by Coinbase. <laughs> 400. Uh, and then to everyone immediately went to CoinGecko. Anyways, anyways. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if you're listening to this, please use CoinGecko. Don't use CoinGecko. <laughs> um, it's just a better platform and Bobby's awesome. Um, and then Tagomi got acquired by Coinbase and now obviously Blockfolio acquisition. So we're starting to see some pretty large acquisitions in the space. Um, this is probably a topic you and I have talked about a couple times is when are we going to see this really in mining? We've seen a few purchases over the year. So Hive bought uh, CryptoLogic, or at least you know a good portion of their business earlier this year. Um, Corsi picked up a acquisition, uh, Honey Badger. Um, there's been some other ones, especially in the GPU software business, but we haven't mm-hmm. seen like mass scale M and A yet. Uh, and I think it's only a matter of time before these cycles start hitting mining. I think it's because a lot of the companies that are looking to potentially get acquired are full of shit. Like, let me just be the first person to say that, like, um, if if a company starts going through due diligence and they're looking at your books to acquire you and none of what you're, you're saying can be substantiated, I think that that's what we're seeing. Like, there's, I think that the, the big targets for acquisition out there um, are just really not interested in being acquired. Like, uh, you know, you think about it, like, if you're mining successfully right now, after just sitting through two years of bear market, are you really open to an acquisition? Like, would you really take the money and are you going to get the multiple that you're looking for to have to walk away from the business that you've built and like all that you've suffered over the last two years? It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. I don't know. No, I I agree with that. I think it'll take like maybe two to three years of more development in the space before there's good targets that are willing to sell. You know, obviously, like you said, at the right multiple, Um, it's going to take a while to develop in the mining space, but for sure. I was just brainstorming with Thomas the other day of like potential acquisition targets and the list is pretty limited for sure. Unless you're going around just acquiring new facilities um, that are actually doing the mining there. There's not a lot you can do in the space. And usually large miners would rather just go and build a facility themselves. Like why would they go and, you know, acquire a business? Um, They can usually just do it themselves in a cheaper area. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you have that money, why not deploy it? to just mine for yourself. I mean, I think that in the the products and services area, there's definitely, that's where the first, you know, like bundle of acquisitions will come in because it's the the easiest and, you know, it makes the most sense, I think. Uh, and probably there will be the least pushback for people who are looking to acquire. Um, yeah. It, it, who knows, man? Who knows? It's an exciting time. Like it, it's a really, really exciting time for all things Bitcoin, but I think especially for mining because, Yes, there's a lot of a lot of positive attention, a lot of focus on on Bitcoin as a whole. Um, mining is still a little bit under the radar. Like it's it's just enough under the radar to where moves can be made, deals can be made, um, and like there can still be a bit of wealth transfer before the big checkbooks come in and just start to acquire and monopolize things. Yeah, that's a good point. So. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, uh, it's been, it's been a, a hell of a week, um, good and bad. And I think that the, the next week ahead, there is going to be another crazy amount of positive information that comes through. Um, we can't predict what it's going to be. We can't project what it's going to be. But all everyone out there needs to know is that whatever happens, proof of news will be here to talk to you guys about it. So, uh, Ethan, is there anything else you want to say before we sign off today? That about covers it. I mean, if you end up throwing that birthday party with the Iron Man suit, you know, I'll be front row with Thomas, Paul, and, and, and John, you know, celebrating you. So, hey, if you want to do that, I'm supportive. Birthday party with the Iron Man suit. Oh, my God. Uh, I don't know where that came from, but I'm down. I'm down. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, everyone, for Proof of News, I'm Wit. This is Ethan, and we'll talk to you guys again next week. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode of Proof of News, a Hashrate TV production. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing for more great content like this every day of the week. In addition, feel free to leave a comment below and let us know what you'd like to see discussed on the next episode of Proof of News. We'd love to hear from you. Also, if you head over to Hashrate.com, you can sign up for our free weekly newsletter, Difficulty Adjustment. Every Wednesday morning, we provide you with the latest news and information on Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and mining. Plus, each week, one newsletter subscriber will be 
selected at random to receive a free Ledger Nano S cryptocurrency wallet. So go ahead and sign up today. Who knows? You may be the next lucky winner. Want more from Hashrate? Follow Hashrate TV on Twitter. It's the easiest way to keep track of our newest content all in one place. That's at hashr 8 underscore TV. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you very soon. Please remember that all content appearing on this or any other Hashrate channel is strictly for informational and entertainment purposes only. You should not construe any such information as legal, tax, investment, financial, or other advice. Consult a licensed financial advisor before investing yours or anyone else's money.